I want to talk about implicit differentiation a little bit more explicitly, shall we say, or uh, deeply than the book does. And let me start with the, the best example, the unit circle. And what I want to do is I want to review real quickly how we used an equation like that and differentiated both sides with respect to x to answer a question like this. What is the slope of the tangent line to that circle at, let's say, um, three-fifths, four-fifths. That's, you can easily verify that that's on the circle because three, four, five is a Pythagorean triangle. So, um, what did we do there? We took the derivative of both sides. Let me just go through the, uh, the mechanics and then convince you that there's something really deep here. We took the derivative of both sides. derivative of that is zero, of course, and we get 2x plus, and then there was this, this thing that trips people up when they do this, is it's not just 2y, it's 2y dy dx. And then when you solve it, it's very easy to solve, it's minus x over y. And if it's this point here, it's minus 3 fifths. A uh, negative number between zero and one, that seems about right. But what's going on here, really? And any time you have two variables, and you're kind of treating them on the same footing, but then you kind of not, well, there's really a Calc 3 issue going on here. And we, we always sweep this under the rug to some extent in uh, BC Calc or AB Calc. But let's think about what's going, really going on. And in a minute, we'll do the, the full multivariable of this, where there's partials, explicit partials going on as well. And we'll definitely need to understand it in multivariable terms then. Well, what's going on here is that I'm saying, I'm claiming, and this is actually a pretty deep claim, it's hard to prove in full generality, that y is secretly a function of x here, let's say little f of x, to f accord with their notation, that saying that x squared plus y squared equals 1 implicitly defines y as a function of f, and as, as a function of x. And, you know, in this case, we could actually solve for y explicitly if we wanted to, we get plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. Very often you can't, and the, the value of implicit differentiation is even if you can't do this solution, you can still do implicit. Now there's some, a couple of issues here I'll go over very briefly. One is the plus or minus. This isn't really the graph of a function. It doesn't fa satisfy the vertical line test. But as long as we say, okay, I'm only talking about, let's say, the upper half of this thing, strike out this guy, then you say, oh, okay, that, that takes care of that issue. There's another subtler issue about what happens at the endpoints, because the derivative, the slope here, goes to infinity. That's kind of nasty, and we'd like to exclude that. Okay, so, you know, strike out those points as well. Just look at the upper half. And if you do that, then it really is true that this function, uh, x squared plus y squared, this equation, does, Im does define this implicitly. There's other subtle issues that maybe we'll be able to get to. We'll see. But, so there's a secret function, and here it doesn't have to be secret, but very often it's, it continues to be secret, that y is really a function of x here. And I'm trying to use that uh, fact without naming the function or knowing the formula for the function. And that's why here the chain rule comes in. Because y, as soon as we know this in the background, that y is really a function of x, that when we take the derivative of y with respect to x, there's going to be a chain rule term, there's going to be a dy dx. But what's going on here, really? That was kind of the, the quick review of the BC version of it. What we've got here is a function of two variables. Let's call it big F. And just to make it accord with the book, they set everything to zero, so let's just move the one over. That's another way to say it. It's, I'm looking at the zero level set of a function of two variables. Okay, that puts it into a context that's somewhat familiar in, in multivariable. Level sets are really interesting, level sets of functions. And so this is the zero level set of a function of two variables. And the cool way to look at this and explain what's going on a little bit more clearly um, is to think about taking partial derivatives and looking at the chain rule as applied to this function. Now, we still, it's still absolutely crucial that we're making this assumption that knowing that y, x and y are in this relationship to each other, knowing they're on the circle, means that y has to be determined by x. 
and there's only one y, of course that's after we take out the bottom half of the circle, that there's only one y in this top half that actually fits any x. So there's a secret function little f here. And so what we've really got is that y is secretly a function of, a secretly a function little f of x. And the, the only thing we know about little f is that we, if we stick in that for y into this function big F, we're always guaranteed to get zero. How much can we get out of that one fact about the function little f? And it, it, it's surprising that we can get a lot out of that. So let's draw a tree diagram. Hmm, let's call that z. And we've got z, a function of x and y. But then secretly, y is also a function of x. Ah, but that's kind of a weird looking tree. It looks like it's going to fall over. This is another case, this is really the, the most important case of what I was talking about before, where you've got a direct dependence on a variable and an indirect dependence. And that is kind of tricky, as we saw in the previous example. You've got to be really careful when you're, depending on when you're talking about total derivatives or partial derivatives. So, let's look at <coughs> the derivatives what the derivatives of this function would be. I can take, it's meaningful to take this whole function, thinking of z as a function of x directly through x and indirectly through y, it makes sense to take the ordinary derivative, or in other words, it's going to be a total derivative. And let's see what happens with the chain rule. It says dz dx, the derivative of that, is going to be partial z partial x times partial x partial, or times, um, not just dx, that's not partial anymore, dx dx, which is going to be 1, plus partial z partial y times dy dx. So, this function f of x, y, really f of x little, little f, is going to depend directly on x and indirectly on x. Here's the direct dependence. I'm just going to write that as 1, which it is. And here's the indirect dependence, which, de which has something to do with how much y changes as a function of x. Okay, so um, if you want to use function notation, which is a little more compact, Big F here, remember, is just here. Big F, big F itself only knows about x and y. It doesn't realize that, that y can be secretly thought of as a function of x. Um, but I, so at big F is just at this level, and so that's f sub x plus f sub y dy dx. Okay, so that's just looking at this and using the chain rule. But now I look and I say, wait a minute that should be zero. And let's, let's make real precise why that should be zero. I'm not saying that if you start at this point and you go in any direction, x or y, that you, the rate of change of big F is going to be zero. It's not. I'm going away from that level set. If I'm changing from one level set to another, it's going to change. But what's special about the relationship of big F and little f is that if I change x and at the same time I make sure that I let y be f, little f of x. It, which, and what is that designed to do? It's designed to make sure that I stay on the level set. And so if I change x, and at the same time I make sure I stay on the level set by making y equals little f of x, then the total derivative should be zero, because I'm keeping the value constant. So my function z as a function of x all the way down where I'm understanding that I'm, I'm keeping y equal to little f of x. That should be a constant. And so this total derivative, not the partial derivative, the partial derivative of big F would be what happens if I go in this direction. That's definitely not going to be zero. But the total derivative of, of uh, big F, as I keep on this curve, that is supposed to be zero. And so what I get is dx, dy dx is minus fx over fy, or if I want to rewrite it, it's partial z, partial x over partial z, partial y. Now here's an interesting thing about the chain rule and these notations. If you just uh, blindly canceled 
the z's here and let this fraction flip, it would look like dy dx, but it would never explain that minus sign. That minus sign is, is a, a very important thing. 